Good morning. Uh, oh. I'm on a Mac this morning, and I still think it's a uh, touchscreen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I know. I can't stop with the touchscreen stuff. So good morning. I'm so glad you're all here. I'm so glad to see some faces. Regina, welcome back home. So good to see you. And uh, what I'd like to do um, is I'm going to start with a little reading from the Tao this morning, um, just to change things up a little bit. And then I'll take you into a peace meditation. By the way, it's so great being in the same house as the musicians. Oh my God, what a luxury. <laughs> what a luxury. You may have heard people say that we must flow with the Tao, but how exactly do we do that? Visualize the Tao as an invisible river that flows through everything. If you can flow with it, life becomes smooth, easy, and joyous. Its current will carry you along, and you do not need to struggle against anything. If you cannot flow with it, it may be because you are still standing by the bank of the river, metaphorically speaking. Fortunately, it is not difficult to take yourself into the flow through a process of visualization. Imagine yourself going into the river of the Tao gradually, with every stop you take in your mind. The stress and tension that prevent you from flowing with the Tao will increase. By the time you are fully immersed in the water, you will find yourself able to relax and allow the current to take you through the rest of your day. Join me, if you will, and to bring your attention today into, again, your heart space. Allow yourself to sense everything, all your surroundings, so you are fully present to what is. In this moment, let us remember that the perfection, the perfection of this moment lives in our inner landscape. Get fully present. Allow your body to become calm and easy and graceful. This is the mindset and this is the experience required to bring peace into the world. In order for shift to happen, it must happen here first. And as you become that, you become a troubadour for peace for the world. So wherever you are, if you will repeat after me right now, I am the peace that I wish to see. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. My community knows this peace for the world. Thank you. I am that I am I am that I am I am that I am I am I am I am that I am 
I am that I am. I am that I am. I am. I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am. I am. I am that I am. I am that I am. I am. I Oh, man, the vibration in the house. Thank you, guys. So the title of my talk today is Don't Tread on My Truth. And, and in, a, in, in a message that I want to leave you with today, and I'm going to give it to you all, all at one time, is what I want for our community more than anything else in the world is a community of people who are not gullible aware, knowledgeable, open, willing to investigate, but not gullible. And this, it's funny because all the classes that I teach, especially with the forgiveness classes, and every time we talk about kindness and every time we talk about compassion, somewhere I also have to discuss the idea that being kind, being compassionate, being loving is not about being a doormat. I want to I want to keep stressing that point because as spiritual humans and as conscious spiritual humans the more aware you are the more you are in touch with the presence and the power that moves through you so you are more powerful than you can possibly imagine and your impact on the world around you is significant it is significant, but in order to do that, you really have to, you really have to, to know yourself. You really do. So it's your conviction that is that which empowers your truth. And that could be a little tricky sometimes because we're not sure when to have conviction. We're not 100% certain. We question ourselves way too often. And, but we're here to learn to tune into our intuitive knowing as a basis for living from source to our reality. So I have four main points I want to give you today. The first one is to stop fearing making mistakes. Very often when we think we're going to make a mistake, we're going to do something wrong, or we think we can't do it, we don't try. We stop ourselves from trying. Avoiding mistakes and not taking risks and not trying something new prevents you from living your life. And I've said this to you before and I'll say it again. I know because I don't, <laughs> I have made many mistakes. I have made many and my ego doesn't even get bruised anymore because I've survived them. I learned from them. It's pretty easy. Avoiding mistakes is the way we stop living. And now, you know, I'm looking at this, at this uh, array of beautiful array of people. Most of us have a number of decades under our belt. That doesn't mean we stop taking risks. Not now, not ever. You keep taking risks no matter the age, no matter your retirement status. Because when you take a risk, you're alive. 
And, and when you make mistakes, I don't know about you all, but the greatest lessons I've learned are from the mistakes I've made because they have that little ouch. I, a week ago, I made dinner for my family. We do, we try, I have tried to resurrect a, the old fashioned uh, tradition of family dinners on Saturdays or Sundays. It depends on whether I'm speaking or not. And so this particular Saturday, my son had requested um, an Italian, you know, Italian. So I make all the food and I bring it to his house and the grandkids are there and we're all squeezing around the table. And I realized that I forgot that my, my youngest son said that his girlfriend is, is uh, can eat gluten. And I knew that, but I made the mistake. But because, be, because of what happened and the way it happened, and Seth had to go out and buy some pasta so we could bring it in and cook it for her, I will never again forget that she's gluten free. But if I had, if I had criticized myself and found a lot of fault with my mistake, I might have not really embraced that as a lesson. Now that's a very simple example, which didn't have much impact out in the world. But the fact is the mistakes that I have made, the, the, the money I've spent, the credit card that I lose or having a hundred dollar bill one time in my lap when, um, when I stood up to get out of the car and forgot the hundred dollar bill was in my lap and walked into a diner and I was like, <gasps> the dollar bill flew away. So my loss was someone else's gain. But those are the lessons and those are the mistakes that taught me to do better. And anybody who used to know me back in the day when we were at 662, Eagle Rock. I used to lose my glasses and my keys all the time. Do you guys remember that? You were all helping me to look for my glasses. It was hysterical. It doesn't happen anymore because I made that mistake often enough, to be honest with you, that finally I, I created a way to compensate. But the fact is making mistakes and taking risks are the thing to do to expand your thinking, to expand your way of being, to expand your joy. So, so for me, a truth for me, a really important truth for me is for me choosing not to be afraid of life. Don't be afraid of life. You know, don't. The other thing is to embrace your intuition. And again, this is not, you know, I speak about this on occasion, but intuition wasn't something that came naturally to me. A lot of spiritual pe people, yes, Donnie, you are correct. I'm looking at your chat. A lot of spiritual people seem to be very plugged in intuitively. It wasn't really me. I had to really work to cultivate that. But you and I, especially when we come to stillness, we close the, our minds, we quiet ourselves both by being quiet, but clo by being quiet inside. When you quiet the noise, you have access to intuition in a way you never had before. And I encourage you to trust yourself and to attempt to cultivate that. Your intuition is a very important thing. And I want to, I want to create a distinction. The, um, Thomas Troward in the Edinburgh Lectures, those of you who read that and remember, he, he was very clear that the difference between a feeling and intuition was that intuition is this, is this knowing that comes up. It doesn't really have a lot of emotion attached to it. So, so, but when we get quiet, and, and you might, ha it might look the same. You might have a feeling or a fear to not drive down a, per a, a particular street, but then the fear is gover governing you. But if you allow for your intuition to come now, and you have an intuitive hit to not drive down a certain block, well, now you're plugged into source. And that is something to cultivate. Um, yeah. So, Trust and trusting yourself and trusting that because if you, if you plug into your intuition and you, and you have the willingness to take risks, all of this begins to build 
a confidence in yourself, a confidence in how you are connected to the world around you. So I want to tell you a, a little bit of a funny story. Um, I was just in Philadelphia with my grandkids for an overnight. What a riot. It was, it was truly a riot. And one, one day we went into, the first day we went to the Franklin Institute and then the next day we went into historic Philadelphia. And let me tell you, Friday was hot as hell. It was like a 90 degree day walking around the city. It was, it was really hard. But what happened was so we needed water. So we walked into a Wawa's and um, they, you know, to buy water. And then they decided they wanted snacks. Well, I was already sitting down inside and because away from the heat. <laughs> so I said, okay, you can get the snacks, but you have to take my debit card and you have to pay for them. And I watched and they, my granddaughter, who's the older one, eight, she thought at first she could do it. And then she realized she couldn't. Now the younger one, the six-year-old said, I can do it. And, and so what I did without going with him, because it was only going to be a number of yards away, I watched from a distance as he confidently walked up to the counter. He's only this little guy. It's adorable with the snacks to pay for it. But what I feel like that did is it helped me to communicate to them, number one, that they were safe. Number two, that they could do it. And I trusted him. So not only for those of us who have children or grandchildren, part of what we do is we teach them to trust themselves and to take fear out of everything. Because if I was totally fearful, like, wait, wait, wait for me, wait for me. Oh my God, let me go with you. There would have been so much fear about that. And the lesson would have been about fear instead of the lesson being about trust yourself and Nana trusts you. So the other, the, I want to tell you one more story about Philly though. So we go to, uh, we go to the independence, the um, independence hall. I didn't know you needed a reservation. I, I, I wasn't, I was caught unaware. So I'm talking to the people online and I find out that that's what I have to do. And there was this, these two gentlemen, young, young men standing there. One man was in a full body furry animal costume. I hear Ty laughing behind me because I showed him the picture. <laughs> Folks, it was 90 degrees out. I just, I want to remind you it was 90 degrees. This guy's in a full costume. He came from some convention or something. And his other friend that was there with him did not have a costume on it. But I watch him on his phone. I said, by chance, are you buying tickets? And he said, yes. I said, by any chance, if I gave you cash, would you buy tickets for me and my grandkids? And they said, yes. And then the point we had to leave because it was going to be almost two hours and come back and rendezvous to go into this tour. So we do this. My grandchildren were a little surprised that they were going to actually meet us. They thought that they wouldn't show up for some reason. Now, mind you, I gave them $3. This was not a big investment, but it was an investment in taking a chance and having them see me trust other, uni other humans and be okay about this. They were a little quirky, I gotta say. So it was a great example. So we come back together and we meet at the time and we get in Independence Hall. And now I'm thinking, okay, I, I turned to my granddaughter, who's eight, and I said, Lila, what lesson did you learn today? Thinking she say something about trusting people or about these strangers. She said that you have to go through security with everything. Now I'm laughing, but I want you to catch this is very, this is very important to who we are. She now has this concept, the world view about security that we never knew as children or as adults, young adults. So now security doesn't just stop there. It has a lot of other messages underneath it, right? It will have a message about not feeling safe, a message about needing to be protected. Those are the unspoken lessons that come along with that. Now I want you to pay attention to this because 
I want you to trust yourself. And part of trusting yourself is, again, you've heard me say this, is to question everything. We are often spoon fed information and I'm not going into any kind of, I'm, I'm not talking about political anything. I'm not talking about conspiracy theories. I'm just talking about irresponsibly reported information that often we as humans take in and believe without questioning. Last year, last fall, Neil had, had a health issue and I did ask his permission to tell you this. He had a health issue that landed him in the hospital and the doctors that he was dealing with, he had this one cardiologist, for 12 years this cardiologist, this educated medical doctor, you know, specialist in his field, and they had my husband convinced for 12 years that he had a bicuspid aortic valve. I don't really know what that's supposed to be, but that's not the point, okay? But they, they had him convinced that he had this. They also told him it was genetic, and they told him that, that he should tell his daughters, okay? And he was the authority, so we believed it. So he gets, we go into the hospital, and he helps Neil to get in onto a bed because it was still very hard getting in there to get a test done. So we go in there, and they take an initial test. And they say, this test will tell you what's going on. They take, put him through a test, and they tell him, oh my, you're, the artery in the front of your heart is 70% occluded. 70%, that's a little eyebrow raising, right? And they said, but we're going to take another test because we want to be sure. So the next day, they give him another test. The next test said, oh, you don't have the front of your artery, the artery in the front of your heart occluded at all, but the back one has 40% occlusion. And this is what makes them say, we think you need a stint. So they put us through this mindset. They show us the video, which they now have in hospitals. And, and we're trusting, we're trusting, get, get the theme here. We're trusting them as authorities. So, He's prepared the next day to go in to get the stint. I'm home. They weren't going to take him in the afternoon. So he called, I find out in the morning they took him in early. So I get myself together and I get to the hospital. And I, when I get there, he's already in the recovery room. And he does not look happy. And I'm like, what happened? He said they didn't do anything. I'm like, what are you talking about? They went in with their scopes and found out that what they thought was true was not true. Experts in the medical field, I need you to catch this. So when they went in, not only did he not need the stent, was his arteries not clogged the way the test told him it was, he also does not have a bicuspid valve. So for 12 years he was misinformed. Mm. So there's a lot of pieces of this that we could pull apart. But what I want to impress you with is do not give your power away. Do not give your power away. And that's not just the medical world. That's your minister. Your minister, your teachers, your doctors, the, the news, the new, whatever news source. Question everything and never right so you, you get in this so can i give a thumbs up that because i really want you to get this message you are intelligent use your intelligence to guide you to right action okay and the and the last thing um is never sacrifice what you believe for another don't don't sacrifice your reality don't sacrifice what's in your heart and never ever go against your values. But so here's the thing right here in this community, I have beloved friends that I completely disagree with. The point is let us learn to live in harmony in disagreement.
We don't have to agree to benefit from being in spiritual community. So if we, if we get tempted to, to sacrifice our values, we are going to then be, be, be tempted to adapt ourselves to, to behaviors and to a worldview that isn't healthy for us or healthy for you as an individual. I also remember, I'm going to tell you one more, <laughs> one more story, because this is so simple, but it, it really, it really is truth. I remember when my mother, my, my mother was, um, I, I was one of seven, as many of you know. And so uh, feeding a, all those kids and all that was a bit of a chore. Now my mother, back in, I guess it was the 60s, it was a time when a lot of convenient foods, convenience foods were coming out. And even though later on in life, we wouldn't have ever eaten this, my mother thought cheese whiz was wonderful and, and SpaghettiOs in a can. And she just thought this stuff was wonderful. And then the, 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 pro, the marketing world convinced the world that margarine, margarine is better than butter. Do you all remember that? You remember that being told that? Lies, 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 lies. Margarine is one of the single worst things that you could ever put in your body. Why? Because of its comp, its chemical composition, literally your body does not know how to process it. Do not eat that. <laughs> okay. But the point is these authorities on the television, on the commercials, if we did not, and actually I didn't question it. I bought into it. I'm sure I started using it when I was first married until, until I learned, I used to be a sous chef or a macrobiotic uh, chef for a while. And I studied under her for a little bit. And that's when I learned how margarine is actually created. If you knew how it was created, you would probably never eat it. Now I say the same thing with hot dogs, but that hasn't quite worked there. But the point is don't be gullible question everything trust yourself and trust god through you as your source and the way the way we begin to do that is we get quiet and we listen and we feel into it there is there is wisdom and truth and that that is really seeking you out you might not realize it, but it's seeking you out. And we have to learn to trust ourselves. And even while we're questioning everything around us, I love you all. We are about to have one of my favorite tunes. Please, dear God, keep your mind open, your heart open, even while questioning everything. Bless you. Namaste.